just want everybody to have a good time, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I couldn't wait to catch a nigga slipping. See, tomorrow's never written. Got my fork and knife ready. See, I'm eating while you sipping. Yeah, your girl is like a model. My girl models for a living. Looking for a wife? Good luck with that. Around here, the cheerleaders fuck the quarterback. So if you ain't throwing money, money, go deep. You sit and talk alone, all you're missing is the dummy. Guess I'm like a red breed. Red breed. I'm bagging hoes. No highlight reels or Lambo. Yo, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Mac Lessons Radio Show. I am your gracious host. This is Mr. Tariq Elite Nasheed, also known as King Flex. And today's show is brought to you by CaseUltra.com. That's where you can get the brand new t-shirt called Government Wolves. It's inspired by a document called Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars. Signed up before the 15th and you will get that shirt along with other shirts. And if you subscribe to Case Ultra and use the coupon code KFLEX, you get 50% off on everything on that site for the first month. And today's show is brought to you by Dream Trips. That's a website that allows you access to a lot of discounted vacations through membership. You don't want to miss that. That's called Dream Trips, and the website is called bestescape.worldventures.biz. So check that out. Ladies and gentlemen, and today's show is also brought to you by Beyond the Conviction. That's a new DVD series where you can learn how to get your job and get your ex-offender game back on. It's a job readiness workshop DVD for at-risk job um, seekers and ex-offenders. It will help you expunge your, your criminal record. It will assist you with counseling and career barriers and the whole nine yards. They will also help you find employment, housing, vehicles, Get Beyond the Conviction, the Job Readiness Worksite Workshop DVD on sale at beyondtheconviction.org or call them at 816-842-4975. And today's show is brought to you by the rap artist called P Dash. He has a brand new album called Dying for a Living. You can get that at imp-dash.com or cdbaby.com slash p-2. And today's show is brought to you by TarikaLeet.com. That's where you can get the brand new Tarika Leet clothing line, all the hot shirts, the cooperate shirts, the whole nine yards. You can get that at TarikaLeet.com. And that's what I'm doing right now. I'm up in Vegas right now. Let me put my Mac and music on. I'm in Vegas right now. Broadcasting live in Vegas, we are at the Magic Convention. We're doing the Magic Fashion Trade Show Convention. And we have the Tariq Elite booth set up. And we're out here representing, showing a lot of the new products that we have coming out for this fall. So you guys need to definitely hit up TariqElite.com. And if you're in Vegas, come check out the booth at the Mandalay Bay Convention Center. We're at booth number 42066. If you guys can make it today, today, Wednesday is the last day. That's why I'm doing this show very early. I'm doing this show extremely early right now so cats can take a listen to this. And if you're in Vegas, y'all come on up and chop up game with me, ladies and gentlemen, here in Vegas. We got all the new Tariq Elite stuff. It's popping. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that later on on today's show, ladies and gentlemen. But before I get into that, a few items in the news that's been happening. Uh, now, I'm in Vegas, and I've been very busy at this um, trade show. I heard there was a shooting down in Georgia. There was some dude that went into this black school, this elementary school. It was a white guy that I I, I heard that it was a white guy. He went into to this elementary school with a gun, with an AK-47. None of the kids were hurt, thank God. But I heard the guy got into a shootout with the cops. And again, a lot of the details are sketchy because I'm still getting it. But the, the thing that intrigues me the most, they said they took this dude alive. That's the thing that, that got me. I mean, brothers are getting killed for jaywalking and going to the store with Skittles and brothers are getting shot in the back by cops. And this motherfucker getting to a shootout with cops after bringing a, a gun into a damn elementary school and he gets taken alive. So that's just amazing to me. But anyway, I digress. I'm not going to even go there. Y'all already know the game as far as that. 
it is what it is, ladies and gentlemen. We just got to get up on that game. And we got to not be afraid to discuss the game. That's why, man, we're getting Hidden Colors 3 in the works, man. Hidden Colors 3 is coming. I'm going to keep you guys posted on that because there's a lot of stuff that we need to talk about. And again, with the show, I, I, I've done a, talked about a lot of racial politics. I want to get back into some game on the show. I don't want to get back heavy into spitting that hot fire because the thing is, a lot of people have to start playing catch up because I can talk about racial politics and what we need to do and I can go out here and lead by example but if there's still a whole bunch of fear from other people and fake nigga outrage you know it, it's a lot of the stuff is going to fall on deaf ears if cats are not going out acting on some of the stuff that we need to do because that's the problem we, we, we can lead by example but other people got to be willing to get out there and put in that work and get the group economic thing going on and the group business and the group hustling and just getting things popping <clears throat> instead of us just talking about it. We got to be about that life. And unfortunately, a lot of us ain't about that life yet. So, uh, again, it's time for cats to start catching up on a lot of the information that I've been spitting so far about the racial politic game. Because, again, I'm about to get back into spitting some of this hot fire like I usually do. Until cats can catch up. And again, I have my movies and stuff that I put out, but, you know, it is what it is because, you know, there's a lot of scapegoating here. People talk about what rappers should do and rappers should do this, rappers should do that. I think rappers are always used as scapegoats because a lot of rappers are up on game. Unfortunately, a lot of rappers are not allowed to speak the truth as far as racial politics and history and just dropping real knowledge the record labels are just not putting it out that's why people were shocked when they saw Waka Flocka with my my DVD the Hidden Colors DVD they were shocked when they saw him with that and they're shocked when they hear a lot of rappers mention it or tweet it and the other day yes, uh, I think it was yesterday or the day before I hear at the convention at the trade show here in Vegas I ran into the rapper Tiger shout out to Tiger Tiger's a real good brother him and his crew, they stopped me, and they were just watching Hidden Colors on the plane. They were like, hey, Tariq, we're just watching you. And I even videotaped us chopping up game. It was a very short clip. You guys can go to YouTube and type in Tariq Nasheed and Tiger and his crew chopping up game about Hidden Colors. And it's a very brief little conversation we had about it. But even Tiger, man, they think he raps about rap ratchet shit. But Tiger was like, yeah, I know about the more, you know. I'm up on that game, Egyptian culture, and he has a clothing line, and it has a lot of Egyptian influences. So a lot of these brothers, man, a lot of these rappers do know the game. They do know what's up. If you just sat down and have a conversation with them, they spit some really deep shit. But you're not allowed to see that with the mainstream media. They're not going to put millions of dollars behind that. So a lot of times they have to express themselves in other ways. So a lot of, I, I say that to say that we shouldn't be so quick to just throw all the rappers under the bus because you have to understand other people are putting these millions of dollars behind certain things and they're taking millions of dollars away from certain things that they they talk about so understand that part of the game that's why it's up to us to really get that group economics thing popping so we can tell the shit the way we need to tell it you feel me but I digress ladies and gentlemen now, ladies and gentlemen, today's topic is all about creating a niche for yourself. And it's going to be a short show today. I'm not going to be on too long because it is late out here and I got things to do. But I do want to chop up game and just really give some good information for the family about how to create a niche for yourself, how to get yourself in there, how to get yourself in a zone so you can shine, not just in business, not just in life. But with the ladies as well, because again, all of this game is applicable across all platforms. So you find the niche with the way you spit at the ladies, the same way you will find the niche in business. And the thing is, finding a niche is not just about talent, because you can be a very talented person, but you don't have a niche and your shit won't pop off until you get a certain niche for yourself. And that happens to a lot of people out here, especially in the music industry. A lot of people are thorough, 
but they might not get that hit record because they haven't found their niche yet. Even in sports, like Kobe Bryant was a great player, but he didn't find his niche until Phil Jackson got a hold of him. And I've always used Kobe Bryant as an example. You know, Kobe was known for not passing the ball, just a ball hogging type of nigga. And then they helped him get in the zone. He found his, his, his player's niche. And again, like I said, a lot of musical artists are like that. For example, the singer Johnny Gill, the R&B singer Johnny Gill. Johnny Gill has been out for a long time. For those who don't know Johnny Gill, Johnny Gill had a hit, um, a few hit records. He had My, My, My in the 90s, and he's with the group New Edition. And Johnny Gill started off as a kid. He was a child singer. And the thing is, a lot of his records when he was a kid, it didn't pop off. His solo stuff really didn't pop off like it should have, even though he was an excellent singer. Now, he had, he did a few songs with a girl named Stacey Lattisaw back in the 80s, and they had a, a few marginal hits, but Johnny Gill was known for being a kid with a grown-ass man voice. And... Even though he could sing and his voice was very mature, there was no niche for it. So he would make a record. It'd be a love song. He'd be like, I'm half crazy going about myself. And women would hear that. They're like, oh, damn, that nigga can sing. I want to go to this concert. And you go see him in person. It's a fucking 10 year old singing like a grown ass man. So that threw people off. Especially women, you know, he he sounds like a sex symbol. I want to give it to you. You know, he sounds like a 45-year-old dude, and then you go to the concert, and it's a damn 10-year-old with Capri Sun stains on his shirt. So now the women are like, oh, damn, I feel creeped out. You know, listening to this nigga feeling a certain way. So grown-ass women weren't really fucking with Johnny Gill like that when he was a child singer. And him being a 10-year-old or 11-year-old kid with a grown man voice, he couldn't appeal to other 11 and 12-year-olds because that would be creepy too. You know, you are, you can't sing about 12-year-old shit with a voice like that. You, you know what I'm saying? It would just sound creepy as hell. You can't come on stage talking about some shit like this. Hold on. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm puberty. Oh, yeah, I'm going through puberty, puberty. Oh, girl, I'm talking about you and me, puberty. Oh, girl, after school, get on your knees, puberty. So you couldn't, <laughs> you can't sing about puberty and you got a fucking 45 man, 45 year old man voice. So that's even creepy to the young girls. So the dude didn't really have a niche when he was a child singer. So the thing is, Johnny found his niche by getting with the group New Edition because the group New Edition, they were a child group, a kid group. They were becoming adults and they needed something to transition them in into adulthood. And Johnny Gill needed something to transition him to adulthood because he was still kind of a kid, a teen, a young man, but he needed that transition. You needed, you needed to see that he was a kid growing into a man. So he got with the group New Edition, and that was a good look for the whole group because the New Edition, they didn't fall off like a lot of former child groups did. They transitioned by getting a mature voice dude who looked like them in the group to take them over that barrier. And Johnny Gill had a group to really bring him over that, that barrier. So they all found their niche. And that shit's been working out ever since. New Edition, a fabulous, man. That's a fabulous group, and they do sold-out concerts now, 20 years later. So when you find your niche, man, that's a very good thing, finding your niche. And that's the same way with life, man, and I want to talk about that. I want to give you guys seven tips on how to create a niche for yourself. Now, number one, the first thing you need to do to create a niche for yourself, you have to Know who your target audience is. Know who your target demographic is going to be. Just like if you want to create a television show, you need to know the target demographic you're going to cater the show to. Is it going to be older? Is it going to be a younger demographic? 
because I'm working with a, a production company now putting a television show together and, and we were dealing with different networks and that was the thing they wanted to know what's the age demo what's the age demographic we wanted to go for and some of the networks that we went to who were interested they were interested in, in, in the show but the demographic my demographic was too young for them and then there were some shows, some networks who thought the demographic was too old. And then we finally got with a network who knows that the demographic is just right. So it's all about finding that niche audience, that target audience. And the same thing when you're out here spitting and you're campaigning for the ladies, fellas. You got to know the type of females that you want to go for and how to tailor your game to them. Because the thing is, some dudes, y'all like hood chicks. And certain types of game won't work for a hood chick. Or not even a hood chick, but a more of a round the way type of chick. Or some of you guys might like more of the upscale bougie chicks and some of that street shit ain't gonna work with a woman like that. So you gotta understand the kind of women you wanna target and how you're gonna tailor your game to that female. And how to market yourself to that female. Now, when you become very thorough in the game, you'll learn how to be a chameleon and you can go back and forth. But if you're just getting into the game, you're going to have to learn how to tailor it and you're going to have to learn how to create some niche game for particular females so you can focus on becoming successful at getting those types. So always understand your market. That's number one. So you can know what to attract. Now, number two, the second thing you need to do, fellas, to create a niche for yourself, you got to do what makes you comfortable and something that you're passionate about. See, the thing is, what worked for one person might not work for you. And trying to do something just because you think it will make a lot of paper, that might not work for you. You might do something that you're just not passionate about and your lack of passion is going to show through the end product. It's going to show through. And you're not going to be very good at it and you're not going to get the results you wanted and then you're going to think you're a failure. It's not that you're just a failure. You just weren't passionate about something. You were looking at the end result instead of the journey. You got to look at the journey and you got to have a good time going through the journey. Just like when I do the Hidden Colors film, I'm very passionate about that because I like the journey of it. That's why the end product is good. Like when we did the first Hidden Colors, we had no idea what the end product was going to be. We didn't know what the reception was going to be. Nothing. We didn't know it was going to be as, as successful as it was. But I enjoyed the process of putting it together because I was always passionate about history. And I like traveling and learning about different cultures and bringing that in and doing all the research and getting all that stuff and putting it together. That was a great journey. So you got to understand the journey. And just like the game, man, a lot of dudes, man, when you're out here spitting at these ladies, a lot of time the passion comes in the cooperation. You get a lot of passion with seeing the cooperation the women are giving you. It's not just about getting ass. Some dudes think it's just about getting that ass, and that's a good thing. Ain't nothing wrong with getting you a nice little taste. But sometimes, man, just knowing that you got the cooperation, the cooperation is working for you, they're feeling your vibe when you're spitting that ism. That's your reward right there. The journey of the game. You're comfortable with spitting. You're comfortable with yourself. And you see other people are comfortable along with you. That's some real fly shit, man. A real player relishes in that. So you always got to do what makes you comfortable. You got to do what's, what's passionate to you. And when you do something that's comfortable, man, when you do something that's passionate, the paper is going to come. The paper is definitely going to come. Even if you're hollering at females, man, nice fly shit will happen. If you're comfortable spitting at ladies and females are feeling your vibe, they start bringing gifts. You dig? Even if you ain't got no real Mac bones in your body, if you spitting that real true to the game shit and you comfortable with what you spitting and you sure about yourself, the gifts will start flowing, dude, I'm telling you. And that's not a bad thing. So be very passionate and be very comfortable with yourself when you're out here spitting and when you're out here campaigning. Not just with the ladies, but with everything you do. Now, number three, the third thing you have to understand when you're trying to create a niche for yourself, family, 
don't try to do too much too soon. A lot of players, y'all make that mistake. You try to bite off a little bit more than you can chew. You know, be thorough at one thing first. You do want to diversify later on, but a lot of times you try to jump in, take on too much, and then that makes you lose focus when you try to do a whole bunch of shit because a lot of times when you try to take on too much too soon, you see all of this stuff in front of you, then you become discouraged and you throw in the towel. You understand? So don't try to do too much too soon. Sometimes you got to take baby steps until you can stand strong. Because I get dudes who hit me up. They're like, hey, Tariq, what's up, man? I'm a virgin, but um, how can I have a threesome with women? Women. I'm like, dude, why don't you get one piece of ass first before you try to double up on it? You understand what I'm saying? Learn how to crawl before you walk, player. I, I, I respect your ambition, but you got to really take your time and get in there before you try to bite off more you can chew. You try to set your goals a little bit too high. There's nothing wrong with setting high goals, but you got to be realistic. You set unrealistic goals, then a nigga's just out here daydreaming and fantasizing, and you don't want to do that. So don't try to do too much too soon when you're trying to create that niche for yourself because you want to learn how to get into a zone. And if you set unrealistic goals, you won't even get in the game for you to get in the zone. You dig? And then you're just going to be out here wishing and, and filibustering with the game. Now, number four, what you need to do when you want to create a niche for yourself, ladies and gentlemen... You got to create your own little trademark. You got to create your signature. You got to create something that's unique to you. What is it unique to you, fellas? What what can you make stand out about yourself? What can you do to stand out? What's your niche? My niche is the game. My niche is spitting that hot fire. That's my niche. Being thorough with spitting that hot fire. But you got to have a trademark. Sometimes it's good to have a signature, even like the way you dress, certain styles that you wear. That's just that's just your trademark. And you can switch up your trademark, by the way. You can switch up your signature. You can switch up your 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 game a little bit. Just like a lot of rappers, man, a lot of rappers and people in the music industry, they have their own trademarks like Rick Ross. He has the trademark that, oh, you know, it's him. Young Jeezy has that, yeah, that's his trademark. So different people have different trademarks where you know it's them and you know it's their thing. And again, sometimes, man, your trademark is, it can be something like the way you rock your hair. It could be something about your jewelry. It can be the, the type of shoes you wear, something about you that stands out, something that makes you stand out from the crowd. You know, you, you want to be up to date, but you don't want to be too trendy where you blend in with everybody too much. You always got to stand out just a little bit, not too much where you're just attention whoring. Because a lot of people out here, they'll try to stand out, but then you stand out like a hundred other people. And that defeats the purpose of you standing out. Like a lot of women do that. Like women will try to stand out by putting like burgundy streaks in their hair. And then if you got 20 other women with burgundy streaks in their hair, that kind of X's out the purpose of putting burgundy streaks in your hair. You do it, or you're supposed to do it to stand out. So always create a niche for yourself as far as getting a trademark or a signature or something that's unique to you. So certain words you might say that might be unique to you. But always have something about you that stands out, something that's identifiable to you. A, a, a catchphrase, a saying, something. Now, number five, the fifth thing, fellas, that you need to do, and ladies, because the game is for the ladies as well. The fifth thing you need to do to create a niche for yourself, you got to build trust through integrity. You got to build trust. People got to trust you to know that you're thorough. That's how you build a niche. That's why people fuck with you because they trust you. And you build trust through integrity. You build integrity by being thorough consistently. Like people rock with me because they know I'm going to be very consistent. I'm going to be thorough and I'm going to follow through. 
they know I'm going to bring that heat. And that's very important. You got to be thorough. You got to be trustworthy. See, a lot of dudes out here, they try to get stuff popping. And they wonder why they don't get it popping. And they don't get it popping because they don't have a track record. I was talking to a gentleman about this on Ustream. He was trying to get um, like some kind of fundraiser for his music. Good good dude, by the way. And a few dudes hit me up with this a lot. A lot of guys try to get money for their mixtapes or some kind of invention they made. And it doesn't get off the ground properly. That's because they haven't created a trust factor with an audience. And you got to create a trust factor with an audience. You got to create a level of trust where they know that you're going to be thorough. If you're just some new dude saying, hey, everybody support me and you haven't proven yourself, it don't work like that. So you got to slowly build your audience. Let them know that you're thorough. Give out a lot of shit for free. I was telling people that too. A lot of times you got to give out stuff for free in order to get people hooked on it. Then the money will flow. Just like with the Mac Lessons radio show, you got hundreds of free shows. Then you have a few pay-per-view specials. Then you have a few DVDs. Then you have some seminars. So this is why my seminars are sold out and my DVDs are sold out because the free game is thorough. And if the free game is thorough, the paid game is going to be even that much more thorough. And it's the same thing with everything you do. That shows integrity. And that's how you build trust. That's how you build trust. And just like when you're dealing with females, man, females are real cooperative with dudes that they know they can trust. If a female knows she can trust you, not on no simp shit. There's a a, a difference between a woman trusting you and a female knowing that you are dependable simp. Let me say that one more time so y'all can catch me. There's a difference between being a trustworthy dude and a dependable simp. A trustworthy dude stands on his word and a woman knows that when he says something, he says what he means and he means what he says. A dependable simp is a dude women can call up who will jump and bow down and do whatever she says. That's not the same as trust. As a matter of fact, women can't trust motherfuckers like that. Because... You're a dependable simp, but the thing is you weak because you're being led by the woman and women know in the back of their mind, another woman can come along and get him whipped just as easily. So they can't really trust you if you're a dependable simp. Did did y'all follow that part of the game? I hope y'all followed that. Women can't trust a dependable simp, even though he's very dependable, but a dependable simp is weak and you can never trust a weak dude. Always remember that, ladies. But deep down, women, you already know that. So, fellas, you need to get that part of the game. If you're a weak, dependable dude and you're always at a woman's beck and call, at the end of the day, that woman can't really trust you because she knows that you can be flipped by any other female. Now, let's get into number six, ladies and gentlemen. Number six, if you want to create a niche for yourself, Players, players, you got to invest in yourself. It's very important that you invest in yourself. Not splurge, and I'm not talking about just throw a lot of money buying frivolous bullshit, but just really invest in yourself. If you have a vision, if you're down to put some money behind your vision, that shows that you believe in that vision. And then other people will be down to invest in that. But you got to be able and be willing and to show people that you can make that initial investment in yourself. But years ago, I had a pimp friend, a real good pimp friend of mine. And we're chopping up game. We're hanging out. And he was like, yo, man, I got to go to the mall. I got to make some investments. So we went to the mall. He's just buying a bunch of gators and suits and all of this expensive stuff. And I said, player, I said, player, I thought you had to go to the mall and make some investments. You're just buying shit. He said, player, these are investments. I'm investing in myself. Now, from the motherfucker on the outside looking in, I'm just a nigga out here just getting dipped and just buying a bunch of expensive clothes to be buying them. But nigga, all of this shit, these are investments. Because when I put on this fly shit, I'm looking good, I'm putting money into myself, women choose, and when they choose, they pay. 
so I get a return on my investment. And that made a lot of sense. And you have to look at it in those terms, man. When you invest in yourself and people see that you put a lot of care and you put a lot of personal attention to yourself, other people will want to get down and do the same. And I don't mean just frivolous, frivolously, just throwing money and just buying a bunch of trinkets and bullshit just to floss. I'm not talking about that, but just invest in certain things you got popping. If you're willing to invest, other people are willing to invest, and that helps create a niche for yourself. And the thing is, man, people come to me all the time with different ideas. And, hey, man, Flex, look, at, I got this business going on. I need some investors. And basically, these niggas done put together some cheap bullshit website, and they want people to throw money at it. But, dude, you didn't even invest in this. You just put up a free website, and now you want everybody else to break bread. It don't work like that. You can't throw together some cheap thrown together bullshit and expect everybody to jump on the bandwagon you got to bring some kind of heat and invest in it because time is an investment even people you if you invest time in certain things that brings value to it just like when we did and i keep bringing back hidden colors man when we do the hidden color series not only does it take a lot of money to do the films to get it popping off but the time that goes into these films it's very expensive. It's a lot of valuable monetary time that goes into that. And time is just as, as, as valuable as money in many cases. So you got to understand that, man. Sometimes you got to take the time to create your niche and invest in yourself. That's very important. Now, last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, number seven in order to create a niche for yourself, you got to think globally. You got to stop thinking like one of these on the block niggas. You got to think globally. You got to think big. You got to reach for the stars and be able to attain them. You got to think outside the box. You got to think of bigger markets. So when you're spitting at ladies, you got to think about ladies from different locations. You got to spit at people in different spots. You got to spit at women from different countries. You got to get out there and spit. You got to campaign. The sky is the limit. You got to think in those terms. And then when you fill the women out and see which, which ones tickled your fancy, then you can tailor your game to that particular female. But you got to be willing and open to really get on out there and get the game popping. And just like business, too, you got to think globally. You got to think internationally when, when it comes to business. When you want to get some shit popping, you got to think about it reaching everybody globally. You dig? You got to think like that. That's why with our Hidden Colors and um, um, the, the Hidden Colors film, we got it all over the world. In Africa and places in Asia, all over Europe, all over the United States, everybody's fucking with it. And even with my clothing line, the Tariq Elite clothing line, which you can get at TariqElite.com. Had to throw that plug in. But we're on that international shit. Now, on Instagram today, it was yesterday, I put up a picture of some of my models I have. I have a couple of models that's been working with us at the fashion show. And one is a very beautiful Brazilian girl. And another one is a very beautiful Asian young lady. And I took some pictures with them and put them on Instagram. And there was some fake hotep niggas complaining. And you know, fake hotep niggas love complaining about shit, but never doing anything. That's the, not just fake hotep niggas, but that's just, a, that's a very niggerish pastime. Complaining and not doing shit. Niggas love complaining without doing anything. That's the only thing niggas got left. The ability to complain. <laughs> niggas, that's that's a, a, a side effect of feeling powerless. I'm powerless everywhere else, but goddammit, all my power is in complaining about frivol frivolous bullshit. But again, I, I put up the picture of a couple of the girls and niggas hollering about where the black, where the black models. Man, where your black models, dog? Ain't no sisters. 
Now, they ignore one of the pictures. One of the pictures, I did have a sister. She was one of the fans, though. She came and she was a very lovely young lady. We took a picture of her wearing the clothes. And a lot of folks don't know, we actually hired or invited some sisters to come through, but the sisters flaked out. And that happens a lot on the West Coast. Sisters on the West Coast are very flaky. People don't understand that. First of all, it's very difficult to get a sister out here to even admit being black, first of all. Niggas be talking all that whole tep shit. It, it, that whole tep shit don't really pop off out here. Motherfuckers be on some I'm mixed with everything else but black, and they be looking like goddamn um, Cicely Tyson. That's number one. But my thing is this. It's my brand. If I want to hire an Eskimo with their titties out, I can do that That's because I can do that. But I did invite some sisters to come on down to model, but those, they flaked out. And the ones who came, they came and they represented. And the thing is, my brand is global. We're at this magic trade show where you have international buyers from all over the world. International buyers from all over the world, and none of the buyers or distributors are black. So we're trying to cater to a a major international market and with these girls that I have representing us, not only they speak different languages, they're dealing with these international cats and they're getting business handled. But a lot of these distributors and buyers from all around the world, a lot of them are Asian. And let me tell y'all some Asian folks don't fuck with nobody but Asians. That's the thing we've been observing. Asian distributors and buyers they don't even look at you if you ain't another asian person they're like i have nothing to say to you but one of the asian girls we have they chop it up with her all day and she's handling that business thinking outside the box i'm playing chess i'm not playing checkers that's how you gotta do you gotta go around a lot of the politics out here Niggas be talking that hood shit on the block shit, but out here in the real world, people circle their wagons and we got to maneuver around that dog. So I got these females out here spitting that hot fire representing on an international level. Fuck that hood nigga shit. You understand that? So again, my the point is you got to think outside the box. You got to think globally. Think big. Don't worry about the little on the block fake hotep niggas complaining all day on social networking sites niggas like that ain't gonna never get nothing popping niggas like that will complain whatever you do like when I did my commercial I had a bunch of black models niggas were complaining about the models having weaves oh man you got black women but they got weaves oh you got sisters are you exploiting the sisters so niggas are gonna complain about any and everything no matter what you do get yours Keep campaigning, keep marketing to people who are about that business, handle your business, get your niche popping, get your paper popping. Don't listen to broke ass, nothing ass niggas. That's the last thing you do. If you want to get your niche popping, that's the last thing you do. Listen to nothing ass niggas who ain't got shit popping themselves. That's the most valuable thing, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, y'all, that's been today's episode of the Mac Lessons Radio Show. It's been real breezy, chopping up game. I hope you guys soaked in some of that good ism. And ladies and gentlemen, get the t-shirts, man. We got some great, wonderful t-shirts at TarikaLeet.com. Those cooperate t-shirts, those are the big sellers globally. Oh, oh, man, people are loving those cooperate v-neck t-shirts. The No Justice shirts are popping. I mean, it's all popping. TarikaLeet.com, ladies and gentlemen. And follow me on Instagram at TarikaLeet, ladies and gentlemen. All right, I'm going to holler at you guys, man. Again, if you're in Vegas, come holler at me up at the Magic Show. Y'all have a good one, family. Deuces. 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 Deuces.